When you miss a green, it's going to be in one of three places. It's going to be on the fairway, the short stuff, it's going to be in the sand, or it's going to be in the rough. Now, of those three, the rough is the least predictable out of all three. Um, much more variability in life. So it's very important to be able to make smart decisions, but also to have a couple of basic shots to default to. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out. Let's try and grow the user base here. From that, I can get more feedback, get more questions and get more content to give back to you. So why exactly is the rough so unpredictable? Well, at most places you will tend to get a mixture of grasses to start with, so everything isn't as uniform here as it might be in the sand. Certainly nowhere near as uniform as it is on the fairway. We have different lengths of rough, have different densities of rough. Now, we've been talking on the same hole on the same golf course. It doesn't always grow at the same rate when we're looking for a lot of growth. Fairway doesn't matter so much because it's cut down really short. Bunkers, yep, there'll be some variability in sand depth from bunker to bunker, spot to spot in the sand, but it's all the same sand, so there's less of a mix going on. Now in the rough, we have this great variability in length, or the rate it's grown at. We have variability in how thick the blades of grass are. And the ball doesn't always sit in the rough the same way, and that is a key differentiator, right? You could have a ball sat right down at the base of the rough, and that's gonna behave dramatically different to a ball that's sat at the top. Now, the rough here is maybe an inch and a half to two inches long in the longest spots. So not as long as some you might see, but it is pretty thick. Okay, it's dense, it does grab the club. I have three balls here, you can see they're all lying very, very differently. We're gonna have a little walk through, uh, a little close inspection. Right, so let's take a look at these three lies. We've got a mobile camera here, we're gonna have a real close up personal inspection of the three balls. And we'll come into the first one and you'll see that it's actually sat pretty good, right? It's up on top. Um, but the important thing to recognize here is that now we have a lot of daylight or space underneath the golf ball. So I could put my finger in and get right underneath there. Uh, obviously I'm disturbing the blades of grass so the ball's moving, but I've probably got almost three quarters of a golf ball of space underneath that. Right now, for me, that actually makes things a little bit less predictable. Then if we go to the second ball, where we have less space underneath, similar blades, so you can see half the ball above maybe at best, and a little bit less room under there, but still some. Here we go on to the third ball, and this one's right down. Okay, so it's pushed right down in, there's no space under. Um, so predictability-wise, we've got a lot of space under, not much, and no space whatsoever. Um, obviously, the, the converse side of that is that because this is down, there's a lot more grass to go through. Okay, versus this one, a little bit less grass, and we come to here and there's very little grass at all from behind to actually need to go through to get contact on this ball. So effectively, this is actually uh, in one way very high risk, as in you could go underneath if you, if you select the wrong kind of shot. But at the same time, it's the most controllable because you won't lose as much spin as you will from the ball that sat down a little bit, and certainly a hell of a lot more spin on it than the ball over there. Um, so what you lose in predictability as far as strike goes, you will start to gain as far as ball control goes. But I think the key takeaway here is you cannot approach both of these shots in the same way. You need something over there that's going to get the club down to the base of the blades, right? So really down almost to the roots. Up here, if you take that same approach, you're going straight underneath it and the ball's not going to go very far. You're going to hit very high on the club. Um, possibly even if you play it with loft, you're going to end up going straight underneath, it's going to go a foot. Right, so you have that big risk factor. So understanding that both of these ends of the spectrum require very different approaches is crucial to gaining control from the rough. So let's tackle maybe the more common shot, and that's a ball that is sat down in a rough. Um, for a ball to suspend, it needs a certain kind of grass. With a lot of grasses you play on, it's gonna sink down into the rough to some degree. So we'll start there. Now, uh, we have three balls in again. We, this one's still pretty deep. This one is also in. We can make that one a little bit lower. And I'm going to give you two basic approaches here to make it as simple as possible to get that ball that is sat down out and onto the green with some degree of control. Um, the, the first is going to be more of a bunker shot style approach. So it depends on how you play bunker shots, of course but something that has a little bit more of a splash intent to it. You know, you're really not trying to get to the ball. You're trying to get this to bottom out just behind the golf, at least make first contact down there and then come back up and out of the rough. So a little bit more of an explosion. Um, the second option we're going to do is a little bit more controlled. 
We're going to use the toe end of the club a little bit, a little bit more of an open face. So let's just run through them both quite quickly. So first one, little explosion. We're going to go a little bit of face opening. Doesn't have to be dramatic, maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And we're looking for something that we get into the ground before the ball. And importantly, we get it coming back up and out of the rough. This isn't a shot where you're trying to just kill the club into the ground. Uh, horrific pin position. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second when it rolls out. This won't be the shot I would choose to get it as close as I could, but let's demonstrate it anyway. So a little kind of bunker splash, low point intent just before the golf ball. So that came out pretty fast. It wasn't sat as deep as this one, for example. We'll go over here. Contact point, middle of the face, which is fine. A little bit deep here, similar kind of speed. Same deal, I'm gonna try and get the club into the sand, back up and out. Quite a bit of resistance there. You need some speed on it. So I'm gonna go face one o'clock, um, 12.45 and being really accurate. Little splash. And she comes out. So you could hear quite a bit thicker. Um, some degree of control, okay, it's not going to make it up that slope, you're going to watch that ball run right the way back down. It is the worst line, but it's a great camera shot, so of course I'm going to choose it. Uh, we'll go to the second option. This one we're actually going to spin the face open, maybe 12.30, but I'm going to stand closer, taller. I'm going to set up for a little bit of a cut, and I'm going to essentially play quite a wide swing where I try and use the toe end of the club, I get the heel elevated off the ground, which reduces the chance of it grabbing here, which can dramatically slow it down. Um, and the thing is when you play for that, as in the bunker shot, if it doesn't grab it, it goes off like a rocket. The second one did grab, speed was very different. Swing length, swing speed was quite similar. So we're gonna try and take that out of the equation to some degree, toe down, face open. Gripping down the club a little bit, probably helps from the rough here. Let's see what we can get. Toe down, face open, little cut swing. Almost made it up the hill, so much less effort required. Um, ball actually flew further than the second one because there was less resistance met here. So two basic options, little splash bunker shot, and then a toe down special, we'll go towards the camera here where the shaft's up, a little bit of left aim, quite a wide swing, and trying to get this toe end of the club really low down into the rough with some degree of follow through. Now, what about the balls at the other end of the spectrum, right? The balls that are sat up on top. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it takes a certain kind of grass for this to happen. Um, you'd be very unfortunate on, on grass types in the UK, for example, for this to happen. We're in the Northeastern US. Um, and this tends to be a little bit more of a common occurrence. And it can sit on top of Bermuda grass in the South as well, uh, but just tend to nestle. So. If we were to go most lofted club here, which usually is the go-to, right? People would usually take the most lofted club before they've even got to the ball and inspect what's going on. Now let's talk about the issues there. The profile of your most lofted club is relatively shallow. Okay, should you open it at all, it gets even thinner still. So the actual height of the club here is very, very low profile. Now if I was to go down clubs, pitch and wedge here by comparison, pretty tall. You could even twist it open a little bit to add some loft and it retains an awful lot more height. Now, direct comparison, both of these clubs spin them open a similar degree, and the retention of height is dramatically more here. Why is that important? Well, if you were to bottom out a little bit low into this grass, you have a lot more club face and club head to contact the ball with. It won't feel good, it might not make it to the target, but it probably won't go two feet in front of you either. Now, playing it square is absolutely fine in this situation majority of the time. If it's a little bit low, you can spin it open a touch, a bit more loft, use a bit more speed and not worry quite so much about the grab. If it's on top, the grab shouldn't be significant. You can play it very, very square. So let's disregard the lob wedge for now and have a look at how to play this. Now, the key here is to keep the height of the club off the ground through impact. All right, so we want to minimize any kind of lengthening out and lowering through the strike. A couple of ways you can do this. You could, in theory, grip right down, play it very straight arm, stand pretty tall, and play almost like long putting stroke, which is absolutely fine. That's gonna minimize things. Unless you happen to change your wrist angles at any point and things get narrow, and maybe narrow to long, then we've got a low point issue. So if you're gonna play it straight arms, make sure you stay up tall through the whole stroke. And we'll try and pick it clean off the top. Now, strike wise, shouldn't be a problem as long as I don't lower things and catch grass with that square leading edge. Let's give that a whirl.
And of course, lower effort, lower speed means I'm going to gain more control over the stroke in general anyway. Let's go again. I should go a fraction, you can see how crazy that pin position is. We will go a fraction open this time just to show you that you can play slightly different trajectories. I'm going to go long arms again. If it gets up the hill, oh, killing me. Killing me. Right, we're going to go second option with this. Same principle, but we're going to go much shorter elbows this time. Uh, this would be my preference because I tend to recommend and encourage players to have softer elbows on most of their short game shots so it kind of fits in with minor things not to say this is a bad thing i just prefer shorter elbows and i try and keep them short through the stroke now you'd be right to think that i could potentially lengthen things out if i don't control my elbows well you've got to get good with the elbows right what i find is this provides a little bit more softness to the shot so we're going to go square face again we're going to go soft elbows keep them short you know having the feeling that they're getting shorter through the stroke, not a problem at all. Very much body powered, very little arm swing, very short elbows. Let's see if we can get one almost touching that fringe up on top to have a chance of getting close. Incredibly hard. Right, but there's your two variations for the ball that sat up on top. If you were to try and play the bunker explosion or the splash shot from there, you're going to have to get very, very lucky to get a good outcome. And don't forget, in the least predictable situations, you want to do all that you can to get the most predictable outcome and take the pressure off your technique.